Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Cape Rugby TV. Of course, big thanks uh, to our partners on board with us, Score Energy Drinks. Um, and, and of course, as you know, Score is on board with Western Province Club Rugby and the Western Province Club Rugby Sevens. MChem 24-hour pharmacy on the corner of N1 and uh, Durban Road. Well, we know that uh, Club Rugby is still suspended. We await further announcements and we'll see what happens. But in the meantime, we stay connected to our clubs and, of course, the extensions of Western Province Rugby. Now, of course, there are still amazing things happening behind the scenes. Tonight, we will be catching up with Jerome Parvater. He's going to tell us a little bit about what's happening with the under-20s. And we'll, of course, also go behind the scenes as we speak to some of the under-20s. Many of them have just returned now from their international duties. And, of course, uh, they've got the under-20 Curry Cup coming up um, in three weeks' time. We'll speak to uh, Jonas Mexen from uh, Rocklands Rugby Football Club. An incredible story that even during these difficult times, um, here is a club that has managed to increase their membership. Alexandria Joseph is from Erste Rufia Rugby Football Club. They've been doing some incredible work and mo most interestingly have recently won a significant prize from the Khaleesi Foundation. But of course, joining me on the line now to tell me about the DHL Western Province women's rugby side and their success over the last few months, including making it into the Premier Division finals, Danelle Rousseau, Western Province uh, women's rugby team manager, joins me back on the line. Danelle, how are things there with you? Hi, good evening, JP. So, of course, let's start at the beginning. Um, we might as well get it out the way. It didn't go your way on, 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 um, on Friday, but typical final everything down to the wire um whatever the result was it was still fantastic uh, to be there to see you guys and everything in action yeah jp uh, you know unfortunately there can only be one winner and um, like i said in the previous interview uh, we had a brilliant season we went into this final winning 10 out of the 10 games um, and as I rightfully also said on the day, those 10 games doesn't matter. It's the 80 minutes that we're on the field. Um, I'm very proud of the girls, um, but like you said, on the day, just didn't go our way. Um, and it was small, basic mistakes, you know, and at the end of the day, I just think like, you know, border just fit, fought that little bit harder than our goals. But but nevertheless, I mean, it's been a fantastic season. And if you, if you look at the, the bigger picture, the fact that we got to play 11 weeks of rugby um, in the midst of a pandemic is an absolute blessing. How do they feel about playing in a final? I mean, you, when we started off the season, we spoke about starting off at the Cape Town Stadium, playing live TV matches for the first time. Um, you were playing at derby matches literally on the first time. And so if we look at that almost as the first uh, milestone, your last milestone, although you had many milestones in the season, you, you, you started off big and you ended off big. Absolutely. I mean, this year has been, it's been absolutely fantastic. I mean, getting the exposure that we got for women's rugby um, and the support. I mean, there's so many people that's contacting, asking for links, you know, people that didn't even know that women's rugby exists. So the girls was absolutely super stoked to be in the final. Um, and it's a, it's a, a final is a whole different ball game. You know, it's a, it's a, it's the survival of the fittest on the day. It's a mental fitness thing as well. Yeah. So I just think, um, you know, as a, as a former player as well, I mean, I've played in, in, in more than one final that we lost to border in, in the past. Um, it's a on the day thing. It's a mental fitness thing. And, you know, something small can fall through the cracks. And, and it happens. And I mean, at the end of the day, um, a big shout out and congratulations to Border and the management and coaching team. Um, they really fought till the bitter end and they, they used the opportunities. You know, yeah. a kicking game in a final is extremely important. They used the penalties that they got. They converted them. Um, so, yeah, I mean, in a nutshell, in the, in the biggest spectrum, I'm very proud of the girls. Uh, hard at the office, hard luck. But I mean, it's, it was still a blast to be on Newlands. I mean, there's not a lot of people that's going to say we played a final in 2021 on Newlands Stadium. It was broadcasted live. So <laughs> we are very, very, very happy about that. So the girls will, of course, dust themselves off now. They'll go back to their various clubs. Um, but it, it's been an incredible, yeah, as, as I said earlier on, I've lost track of how many months it has been now. Um, but you started off with a fairly big squad of about... 50 or so and you trimmed it down but now the girls go back to back to their clubs 
um, th this, yes. this, these last few months has been a tremendous amount ex of experience building with yourselves in the management team, with Coach Laurie and Coach Jongi. Um, you guys have also had exposure to Jerome and Nazim and uh, Labib and the other management team at Western Problems. How much, how much of a value, how much experience will, will go back into the club structures now? An immense amount will go back. I think we've learned a lot. Um, we've learned, I mean, this is the first year that we get exposed to 11 consecutive weeks of provincial rugby. Um, we've never had that ever since um, since uh, the provincial league started so and the input that all the coaches and each and every individual brought to the team um, and also the exposure that the team got I think it's going to make a heck of a difference within the the clubs I think it's also really um, given the opportunity for more women's representatives to to raise their hands in respective clubs you know some clubs that still doesn't have that um, I'm sure after this fantastic uh, season that Western Province had, they would love to be a part of that. And I would really like to challenge them, you know, to start off getting the women's representative. Um, but yeah, a lot is going back to the clubs. Unfortunately, obviously, we're waiting um, until we get the go ahead for the for the clubs to to participate in a, in a league. Um, we don't know if that's going to happen. But yes, they have all gone back to their respective clubs. And obviously, from next month, uh, Saru, the, the, camp, the girls are going to camp. Um, in preparation for the World Cup next year. Well, that was my next my next question. Um, have have there been any announcements, uh, selections made from from the Western Province squad into the South African squad that is official? Yes, yes. The the, the they've announced a squad of thirty five people. Um, some of the names you might know: Donal Snyder has come through. Zinclair Mapupa is there. Cindy Boy is there. Varushka Grain is there. Rosaline um, Sanazu. You know, so we've got quite a few girls there. Um, there's been a lot of questions asked about certain players, the names that's not reflecting there. Um, but I can just say that I just think from Sara's perspective, they're also um, looking at, you know, all the different players and all the different options they have. The South Africa has got a lot of, they've got a lot of potential um, and strong rugby players. So, I mean, yes, there's, we've got girls that's called up and these players of all the unions um, in the squad and they will they will meet next month. So, yeah, in preparation well, what, for, for the World Cup any, next year. Yeah, so it's, is, is that what it is? It's about now preparation for, for next year's World yes. Cup. So, so is this now yes. Coach Stanley Robe and I was trying to say, listen, let's get ahead of the game here. Let's, let's get our squad in place and um, we've got a year to get ready. Definitely. Um, Coach Stanley um, and, his, and his management team, I want to wish them all the best of luck. Um, they've also had a rough patch, um, you know, with the pandemic and everything in the camp. But yeah, they, they are ahead of it. And I think it's fantastic that they've got a little bit more than a year to prepare for the World Cup. And they're going to definitely utilize the time. Um, there's going to be various camps, you know, unfortunately, I can't speak on their behalf with yeah, regards yeah. to dates and things. But um, I know that there's going to be various camps. The girls have been working extremely hard, although they were participating um, in the Premier League division. Uh, all the girls that has been called up have been putting in extra hours, extra training sessions um, and raising their hands in the games. So, yeah, I'm extremely proud of each and every player, especially of Western Province, that's been called up for duty. Oh, well, I think it's fantastic. And uh, what I'm also looking forward to next is uh, your, your new initiative on the on the women's collective that is gathering together all the current and former Western Province rugby team participants and uh, um, uh, looking at uh, uh, some of the names that you're going to have in the, in that group of people sharing stories and so on that that also sounds very exciting. No, definitely. I think that's something that's going to that's going to be great. We actually had the privilege of former players, Western Province players, that sent us like video clips. Um, the legendary Gloria Sullivan. Uh, Natasha Hofmeister, um, you know, they, they send us videos of uh, well wishes for the weekend. So, yes, definitely we'll see names like Chantal Seekers, um, obviously Lorian, myself. Um, there's so many people that's, that's, that's busy signing up. And, um, yeah, it will be great to just have a little forum or a little meeting and a chat, you know, talking about the good old days. Um, I must say, you know, being in a position 
with Laurie and it's it's been great. Like we were on Newland Saturday and I got Mandisa there who used to play for Borders, now the head of women's rugby there. And we just shared a few little, you know, stories of back in the day. And that's amazing. So I'm looking forward to, you know, getting all the girls together, former management and all that, and just see, you know, uh, how it's evolved. I think when we actually go back to the draw board and see where we started in 2002, 2003, and where we are today, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's really, going to be great. You guys can share all your hits and memories. Uh, Danelle, we'll, <laughs> yes. we'll leave it at that and we'll say, listen, well done again. It was great catching up with you. You've uh, taken a lot of time to, to share the experiences and, ca and keep us connected and, and keep everybody out there aware of what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, that takes a tremendous amount of sacrifice on your side and we really appreciate it. I think everybody wanted to follow the progress of, of the squad and, and you've managed to be the link between us and, and the team. So thank you very much. And of course, we hope to catch up with you soon. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. It's really, truly been a pleasure. And um, like I said, I would really like to challenge all the clubs out there, you know, get a women's representative, try to pull together a few goals and um, yeah, let's make this happen. There's a lot more like... Uh, potential and magnificent players out there that doesn't even know it yet. So once again, thank you very much. And definitely, yes, we will catch up soon.